Hey folks, how you doing? Welcome back to the Heine House. Today, I'm going to talk about the audio mixer in OBS. This is a very, very crucial and important piece of your live show. So I'm going to talk about it and uh, show a little bit about it and hopefully clear some things up for you. So here's the audio mixer. I just have it popped out of my OBS and I'm using 25.0.8. Um, and of course, this will apply to all versions of OBS, so even in the future when they update it, uh, these features should still be implemented. Whether you have one, let's call this a channel, whether you have one channel or a hundred channels, don't let that overwhelm you. We are really focusing on only one. If you can master one channel in here, then you can master all of them. Uh, that is really the tip that I, I give even when mixing on big consoles. Uh, and small or large format consoles. If you know one channel strip, you, you've you learned them all. It's very, very much the same and applies exactly in this situation. Okay, so I'm gonna focus on the one that you see that I'm getting signal on. That is my Scarlett, that I've named Scarlett Audio. I'm using a Focusrite Scarlett interface for my audio interface in this mic. So there's our signal. Uh, to the right, we have our fader here that we can move up and down to adjust our levels. Um, and then on the left is our VU meter, more or less, giving us a representation of signal and audio coming in on that channel. Now at the bottom we have a mute. If I click this, I said you can't hear me, can you? That mutes and unmutes. Make sure to always look at that um, because sometimes you may have by accident just click that. Uh, so make sure to look at that. Uh, to the left of the channel here at the bottom left we have our uh, gear, which is basically settings. So what we have is lock volume, unhide all, hide, rename, copy filters, vertical filters, properties, and advanced properties. I'm gonna briefly talk about all of these and then show you some stuff inside uh, these settings. Lock volume, as you see, when I click that, it basically locks the volume. It will not allow me to adjust this anymore. This is a great way to not accidentally uh, adjust this and move that around. If you know that the volume level needs to be right here, this is a great way to make sure that you don't accidentally hit it. Hide and unhide. If you have a lot of channels in different scenes and different sources, you may want to have those uh, displayed and or not displayed. Um, I have about 10 different audio sources throughout all of my different scenes. I have a scene for my podcast, a scene for my my uh, 16 by nine gaming a uh, scene for my four by three retro gaming scene uh, and so on and so forth. And I have different audio settings. As you can imagine, I've got a mic, I've got a shotgun mic, I have a CB radio mic, I have a headphone mic, I have all these different mics. So if you have all those in there and you don't want to keep re-adding and then deleting, you don't have to do any of that. All you have to do is per scene, just click on hide and it will get rid of it. It'll just hide it, but make sure you're muted, of course. Make sure you mute it first, then hide it. And then to bring them all back, you have unhide all. When you click that, it just brings all of them back. So you have to hide them individually one by one. Renaming, self-explanatory, just renames to uh, whatever name you want for that channel. Copy filters, this is related to the filters, uh, which is in here, which is all of your uh, audio effects. All right, so you can copy your uh, uh, audio effects and then paste them. You'll see paste filters be highlighted on another channel. So let's say I want to copy all of these filters. I just right click here, copy filters, and then if say I want to put it here on the Sennheiser mic, right click, and now we see paste filters becomes available. That means I can now paste them in there and it copies every bit of my effects over here right onto that channel. Very, very nice and very convenient. Especially if you have EQ settings, compression settings, noise reduction settings, and you have similar like mics, this is a great starting point. Um, I don't think any any two mics are gonna sound identical. Shotgun mics, dynamic mics, condenser mics, they're all different. They all require different gain stages. But if you have something that you like that works for your voice, like an EQ setting, certain roll-off settings, copy them over to your your next channel, your next microphone input, and then start tweaking from there. That's, that's kind of what I do. Uh, so that's really, really beneficial and very helpful.
Uh, next, vertical layout. This just changes the layout, either vertical or horizontal. I think it's this by default, and uh, I I don't like it. I have always worked with mixers, and just how they are in mixers, and also in Pro Tools and uh, my DAW. So I prefer that. It's just a preference. It has absolutely no bearing on any performance. Uh, then we have filters. If we go into filters, which is the screen right up here, it allows us to apply different effects for uh, audio effects for that channel strip. Now just remember, these are stacked. And one thing to remember is that the order that they're placed is the order the audio will pass through first. So for instance, EQs on top, that means my microphone, the signal coming into the, to the audio interface, going into the computer, from the computer it's going into OBS, and then from OBS it's going into, boom, the EQ that's on top. Then it comes out of the EQ into the noise suppression, into the gate, into the compressor, into another EQ, because I have a notch filter in there. We can talk, we'll talk about EQs and stuff on, on another video. Then we have a limiter, then a gain. That's my actual gain stage that you're listening to right now. That is the signal uh, path, basically the signal flow of how my audio is being processed. And they're in that order. If you see these arrows down here at the bottom, you can move these. If I just click and highlight, that one's blue. If I hit arrow up, it then goes up a level and probably won't have too much of a change, to be honest there. I, I should probably do another video on actually gain, and call it gain staging because this is what this is called. This is just kind of a quick overview is that's what those buttons down there do. To add another effect, you click plus and then allows you to put in any effect here. And then also you can do VSTs, which is great if you have another DAW and a bunch of VAT, VST plugins, you go ahead and set those up as well. All right, and then down here at the bottom, we have properties and advanced audio properties, two of the most important tabs down here, well, being other than filters. Um, you have properties, which basically brings up your uh, audio device properties, which basically allows you to click on and then choose your different audio source. So this is telling you, um, are giving you the options of what's available and then make sure that you have the right thing selected. Now, sometimes this can go haywire and for whatever reason, after maybe an update or something, it will select a different input. So you wanna make sure to, every once in a while, come into this menu, click on this, and just make sure that your, your correct device is selected. I've had it numerous times where it selects, like when I update my drivers, sometimes it installs HDMI audio drivers for my monitors. I launch OBS and everything is set to go out to my monitor. I'll like be playing a game and I, I hear all this really crappy audio and I'm like, why is it coming on my monitor? Oh, that's right. Cause Nvidia installed the audio drivers and then windows was like, Oh, you want to use your monitor and switches to it. So just, Hey, it happens. <laughs> so just make sure to come in here, make sure the right device is selected and click. Okay. And then it will be there. Okay. Now the last one here is the most important part of your audio mixer setup here is your advanced audio properties. Have you ever wondered how to hear yourself? and to understand what you're doing to affect your audio, the effects you're putting in, how that sounds. Basically, you want to figure out how to monitor yourself. This is the really, really important part of mixing and getting the sound that you want. Um, instead of putting in these effects, how do you know how it sounds? You don't know how it sounds. This is how you do it. Come in here to advanced audio properties and you see on, on the left here is a list of all your devices, all your different uh, your, your web browsers, your different microphones. Here's different alerts. These are web browsers, uh, my camera. I've got desktop audio. And then what you can do is you want to come over here and uh, whatever, let's just take it from left to right. Let's talk about the whole thing while we're here. It's the name of the, the audio source, the status, if it is inactive or active, most of them will, will say active, the volume level of this, all right, of how it's set um, in your mixer. You can adjust it manually too. If you want right here, you can just type it in. Um, or you can do it by increments right here in the up and down arrows, right? You can boost it or cut it. If you are wanting it to be a mono source, uh, unless you're like a microphone like this can be used as a mono source or say you have some sort of input that's only coming out of one side. Um, if, if you're listening in your headphones and your source comes out of only one side and you can't figure it out, just click mono, boom. And then it basically is called summing. It will sum that audio to one channel to a mono source. So that's a fantastic feat. Actually, probably one of the most overlooked, most amazing features. I love this. I use this for 
uh, particular for my microphones right here, as you can see, because they're just single mono. They're not stereo sources. They don't need to be stereo. Some of them, some of them to mono. Um, then we have our balance. This is um, also called panning in the audio world. So we can pan it left channel or right channel, left or right side. This is our sync offset, which is nice. We can, we can actually delay the audio in milliseconds uh, to sync up with our video. This is very, very handy. Um, I, I've had to use this many, many times in the past. Uh, my current computer is a, is a beast and it syncs everything up lovely. I built it that way. <laughs> I've struggled so many years with having sync issues. I said, my next computer, I'm not doing it. I'm just going all out. Um, and so I, as you see, I have zero millis. Oop, whoa, well, I did. I have zero milliseconds. I don't have any Move that back there. What are you doing? There we go. Um, I don't have any sync issues, but if you do have sync issues, this is where you're going to come in and delay audio. So if you find that your video and audio are out of sync, uh, you can come in here and just really just do trial and error and try to test and try to figure out, um, you know, put on there, you know, 500 milliseconds, try that, 1,000 milliseconds, that's one second. Try that, you know, 4,000 milliseconds, four seconds, however, I mean, that's a long time, but you know what I mean. Um, it may be out of sync, and this is where you can uh, correct that. Lastly here, we'll just talk about the audio monitoring. This is the big, big, big one here. Um, so if I go down to my Scarlet audio, which is right here, but if I click on monitor, it pulls up some options. I have monitor only in mute output, and I have monitor and output. What this is saying to you is that I, if I click monitor only in mute output, what that does is it allows me to hear myself in my headphones, but it also mutes the output so that that doesn't go uh, to the master on the output. All right, so everyone else won't hear that. If I have a monitor and output, that means it's going to both. I'm gonna hear it here and people are gonna hear it out there. So if I click monitor and output, now, now we're, we're going, going to be hearing me twice. twice. But this is a good way, oh boy, it's weird talking, hear me in the delay, but I am monitoring what I am talking. Okay, I gotta turn this off, I can't do it. Okay, so, but you get the idea here. So this is great, this is how you'd go in and check, check, one, two, one, two. You'd go up here and you start adjusting your things. So you would pull up your filter section, right? Pull up your advanced audio properties Go in and monitor yourself. Turn this back on to monitor. And, and then, then come up here. here. Let's, Let's turn, turn some of these off. off. There goes my EQ. Noise suppression. Gate. Compress. Actually, let's get rid of it. There we go. That is my microphone just straight off the mic. Right into the interface. No EQ. Nothing. Then that is my complete audio source uh, signal flow for this chain on this particular mic. Those all change depending on what mic I'm using. That is just set for this only, um, but I have a different setting for my shotgun mic that I use at the sim rig when I'm driving and I have the shotgun mic looking at me. Um, and then I also have uh, different settings for the, the boom. Just understand that your audio is extremely important and every single microphone, every input you have, they all are different. They have different polar patterns, pickup patterns. They have different frequency responses. They, you have different, if you're in different parts of your house, it can be noisier here or there. There's so many variables with your audio. Every microphone does need its own thing. But I hope this is helpful to you. Just a, I, I try to make it quick. I can never do quick videos. I just always jump in and uh, go overboard. But um, I hope that's helpful to you. Um, if you have any questions about uh, running audio or figuring out uh, audio or filters or things like that in OBS, please write it in the comments down below. And uh, I read every comment and I get back to you uh, as soon as we can. I also have a great Discord. Join the Discord community. That's also a great way to get at me in real time uh, so I can help and uh, guide in any way that I can. And of course, um, subscribe if you like it. Give me a thumbs up if you like this and want to see some more tips and tricks for streaming. Join me on my podcast. I talk weekly about games and tech, and also I stream every week on Twitch. All right, I think that's about it. You guys have a wonderful day. Talk to you later.